powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the new news from Montana's news leader. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on your MTN statewide news this Tuesday. I'm Janelle Slade. A one year old boy abducted from Poplar this morning has authorities asking for your help today. An Amber Alert was issued this morning around 830. The Montana Department of Justice says Malachi Talley, a black and Native American child, was forcefully taken from his home in Poplar. Malachi is about two feet tall and 25 pounds with brown eyes and curly dark brown hair. The suspect is 22 year old Dejean. Jera Talley, described as a black male traveling with three unknown white males in a small silver or white SUV. They may be heading towards Williston, North Dakota. A huge decision this morning from the U.S. Supreme Court in a Montana case involving public aid for religious schools. In a 5-4 decision, the high court says that Montana Constitution cannot be used to prevent a state tax credit from helping fund the education of kids attending religious schools. Now, the case involved a 2015 law that created a $150 income tax credit for donations to private scholarship organizations. But the State Department of Revenue said any scholarship funded by the tax credit could not go to children who attend a school affiliated with religion. Three Kalispell parents, with the help of a national group, challenged that rule in court. The Montana Supreme Court said the tax credit program violated Montana's constitutional ban on public aid to religious organizations and threw out the entire program. But the parents appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court, which said today that Montana's ban violates the U.S. Constitution's Freedom of Religion Clause. One of the parents, Kendra Espinoza, who was the lead plaintiff, told MTN News this morning her family is thrilled by the decision. We are very, very excited about this decision. We were yipping and hollering this morning about this, so this is very exciting. Um, what this means for us is that we, we get to continue our enrollment there. We, um, this ensures that we have that ability to, with, with scholarships, when scholarships are available, that means that we have that ability to continue um, at Stillwater Christian School with that education that they um, have thrived at and they've done so well with so far. Now, the families had continued to benefit from the scholarships while the case was on appeal. Well, it's now time to check in on the weather scene today. Good afternoon, Ed McIntosh. Janelle Slade, we got rain to talk about and a uh, lot of it. Okay. Yeah. For some, it's been very welcome. For others, it's starting to cause some problems. This is where Doppler radar has been picking up the heavier amounts. You can see quite a bit through the Dakotas in eastern Montana. It seems to be wrapping around a lot, though, and missing portions of central Montana, although we've got some pretty good rain totals from the last several days. You see a lot of reports there with uh, between one and three three inches of total rain, but it's also brought some stronger storms over to eastern Montana and around Watford City, North Dakota last night. We actually had a funnel cloud being reported for this evening. The possibility of more rain is increasing the chances of strong to severe storms into the Dakotas. Take a closer look at that coming up in a few minutes. All right, thanks so much, Ed. Well, just one day after Montana's single day record for coronavirus cases, today the state reports 49 more positives. As MTN reported yesterday, Missoula County had the largest number of new cases with 20. Gallatin and Yellowstone counties each reporting 11. Now, the death toll remains at 22, along with 647 people recovered. Another 2,000 tests were conducted. State health leaders are calling these numbers frightening. Well, now for a positive story during this pandemic. A Billings man was released from the hospital yesterday after spending three weeks there battling the coronavirus. Family gathered to celebrate Irving Rising Sun, who said at times he was so sick he thought he may never see them again. Rising Sun's daughter says it was important for the family to stay strong for her dad and support him from afar. Irving thanks the hospital staff and says he has a new perspective on life. A lot of things that you take care of, that you take for granted. And come, they come up and you realize what advantage you have when you're, when you're not sick. Now Irving's family asks everyone to please follow the recommended safety guidelines so fewer families have to go through a similar situation. In Wyoming, Governor Mark Gordon will extend the state's current COVID-19 restrictions. Right now, 288 people have the virus there. With the extension, there's a 250 person limit for events if social distancing is possible. Up to 50 people are allowed in confined spaces. Churches can continue to operate without restrictions. 
but social distancing is encouraged. Well, as the virus starts to peak again, the shortage of N95 masks continues. 3M makes the masks and says it's doubled production this year. But demand continues to outweigh supply, and the company cannot keep up with production. This is forcing hospital workers to reuse their masks, even though the virus can live on surfaces up to 72 hours. When our Lee woman accused of beating her uncle to death with a baseball bat over the weekend has been charged with deliberate homicide. Police say 41 year old Darnell Rivas was trying to assault her own mother when her uncle stepped in and stopped her. Now Rivas headbutted the victim and was taken to the hospital for lacerations on her forehead. The next day Rivas returned to her mother's house and found her uncle sitting in his car outside. She then grabbed a metal baseball bat allegedly broke the windows out of his car and allegedly beat him to death. Rivas's bail is set at $1 million. A 38-year-old Livingston woman is dead and a 45-year-old Livingston man injured in a crash north of Gardner. It happened just after 9.30 last night on U.S. Highway 89. The vehicle was southbound when it left the road. After a turn, it hit an embankment and rolled several times. Both the man and the woman were not wearing seatbelts and were ejected. It's unclear which one was the driver. The Montana Highway Patrol believes alcohol and speed were factors in the crash. This was Montana's 83rd fatal crash this year. Well, Missoula County's virtual rail summit is now set for September after being delayed because of the pandemic. Missoula County commissioners have been working with their counterparts in other counties to float the idea of bringing passenger rail service across the southern route again. Well, it's been more than 40 years since Amtrak provided regular service between Billings and Missoula. Now, the idea is to form a Big Sky Passenger Rail Authority that would provide a multiple county structure to explore organizing and funding operations. Commissioners are expected to draft a letter to Montana's congressional delegation this week asking for federal support to explore the idea of a Southern Route Rail Service. Well, we have more news ahead on your new news. The governor's seat is open this year in Montana and the race is on. Mike Dennison has the very latest. The time now is 12.07, but first, meteorologist Ed McIntosh is in next with our statewide weather forecast.